What's up guys, Miles here with 9to5Mac, and in the past few months I've been looking for a new Mac desktop to use as my main machine for video editing and whatnot, but I didn't want to spend more than $2,000, so how did I go about doing that? Well, that's what this video is about. Today we're going to be going over my ultimate Mac mini setup under $2,000. Firstly, I picked up the baseline i5 Mac Mini with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage uh, for a grand total of $929 on Amazon.com. I don't think that sale is still active, but I was lucky to get it for that price when I did. Uh, so the first thing I did, knowing that the 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage was not going to cut it, uh, I went out and got a 16GB single stick from Kingston and it only cost me about $70 bucks, uh, for a grand total of 20 gigs of RAM, and yes, I know that is a super Super weird number but it's better than 8 gigs for sure and I know it's gonna give me a noticeable performance boost uh, when video editing and whatnot and if you're looking to do the same thing with your Mac mini doing a self user upgrade Jeff did a great video on the channel giving you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do so it's the video I used when I installed the RAM on my machine and because I only got a single dim stick I know when the time comes when I'm ready to upgrade I can just spend another 70 bucks and get a grand total of 32 gigs of RAM in the machine which is pretty cool adding in that 16 gigs of RAM has been pretty helpful overall uh, when using apps that are hella RAM hungry uh, like Chrome and all the Adobe applications you can see a noticeable difference so I'm glad I got this in here. Now when addressing the storage side of things I knew there was really only one avenue I could take given the way the Mac mini is built all the storage is soldered on so I really only had one choice and that was to get an external Thunderbolt 3 drive so I scoured the internet looking for something that would fit my fancy and fit the desired budget and then I came across the shell from Fledging. It's a small, portable Thunderbolt 3 drive, and I've loved using it so far. Uh, their Amazon listing claims that it has transfer speeds of up to 2,000 megabits plus read and write, and I gotta say, when throwing it on the Blackmagic disk test, it does just that. It's 385 for the one terabyte version of this drive, and I gotta say, for that price, it's a great option. Uh, it's only a little bit taller and thicker than a Samsung T5, and still smaller than a Samsung X5. Plus, I really like that it has an aluminum chassis to match the aesthetics of the Mac Mini, kinda. It's not exactly exactly space gray, but it'll do for sure. Another really great aspect of this drive is that it's portable, like I said. So a certain scenario that I utilize quite often, almost on a weekly if not daily basis, is starting a video here in the office, and then when I've gotta go, I just finish it up on the MacBook Air uh, because I have a Final Cut library saved on the drive, and that makes it incredibly easy for me to use. I can just pick up right where I left off. But overall, I just gotta say, I really have loved using the shell from Fledging. Uh, if you're looking for a semi-inexpensive, or at least comparatively inexpensive, uh, Thunderbolt 3 drive, this is definitely one you should check out. There will be links in the description down below. Arguably, the most important part of this upgrade setup is the GPU, because as we all know, the Mac Mini does not come with a dedicated graphics card, which sucks, but PowerColor's got us covered. This is the PowerColor Mini Pro. It's an all-in-one eGPU solution, and it's made by PowerColor with the 570 graphics card inside with eight gigabytes of VRAM. And as you can see with the videos I make, color and graphical work are a huge aspect of my workflow. So without this accessory, I wouldn't be able to edit videos efficiently nor properly. You can snag this guy for 480 bucks on Amazon right now. And for those looking to use a 570 GPU externally, this is probably one of the best solutions you can get as buying the graphics card and a chassis separately are likely gonna cost you a little bit more money. You can really tell they put a lot of effort into making the chassis as small as possible. Uh, it's less than four inches wide and can easily be snuck behind a desk setup if you don't want the eGPU being seen on your desk. Obviously weight isn't an issue either because you can easily carry this guy with one hand or even bring with you on a trip or something of that nature. Uh, and obviously the biggest part or the heaviest part of the setup as far as the eGPU is concerned is going to be the power supply because it's separate from the chassis. Uh, but yeah, I actually took the PowerColor Mini Pro with me on a trip and I was editing with the MacBook Air raw Canon C200 footage and it worked pretty well. Taking a look around the Mini Pro box itself, it's got two USB 3.0 ports on the front alongside the Thunderbolt 3 port, so if you needed to plug in any extra peripherals, you can do that here. And even though most Mac Mini users, including myself, won't have much use for it, uh, there's a gigabit ethernet port on the other side if you need plug-in internet. The graphics card itself has two HDMI ports, two display ports, and a DVI port, so you should have no problem connecting this to any modern monitor. Uh, but by far, my biggest complaint with this box overall is the fan noise. 
Um, even when under no sort of load at all, it still makes a noticeable sound. You can always hear the fans going off unless the Mac Mini is asleep. Uh, but for me, it's a necessary sacrifice. It is kind of obnoxious coming from an almost completely silent Mac Mini setup, uh, but it's totally worth it for those performance boosts, and I, I can get used to it. And I guess a silver lining here is that you don't actually notice an increase in the fan noise uh, when the GPU is actually under load, utilizing it for color grading and effects and whatnot, so take that for what it is. So of course I wanted to run some benchmarks just to prove that buying all this stuff for the Mac Mini is actually worth it and you're actually gonna see performance gains. Uh, so the first benchmark I did was the standard Bruce X5K test. If you're not sure what that is, um, it's essentially just an XML file that you import into your timeline. It basically brings in a bunch of GPU intensive uh, generators, titles, transitions, and effects um, at a very short time, but at a 5K resolution. If you've watched any benchmarking videos on the channel in the past done by Jeff, I'm sure you're aware of what it is. So taking a look at some of the results, uh, the Mac mini without the SSD and without the eGPU took a minute and 59 seconds to export, which is not bad on its own. Uh, but then when you throw in the eGPU, uh, it only took a minute and 17 seconds, uh, closer to a minute and 18 seconds, but we'll just call it a minute and 17. It was like a minute and 17 and 95 milliseconds. Uh, but either way, pretty noticeable difference, but here's where you see a much more noticeable difference. Uh, I basically just did a render out, not even an export, just a render out of a uh, five minute video. It's a video I actually have on the channel the iPhone 11 versus OnePlus 7T comparison. Uh, so I rendered out the timeline without the SSD and without the uh, eGPU, and that took 36 minutes and 21 seconds, which is not fun at all. Uh, but when you throw on the eGPU, it only took 27 minutes and 32 seconds, which is a lot better. For some people who aren't professionals who don't do this for a living, uh, that less than 10 minute difference is not gonna matter much. But for those who are, I'm sure you know that having an eGPU with a Mac Mini setup is critical. Even though these benchmarks, generally speaking, aren't very, very drastic uh, when looking at them comparatively, uh, just the general performance and fluidity of this machine when doing graphical and video work has gone up a crap ton. For example, I don't have to look at my footage in performance mode in FCPX anymore. I can look at them and play back my footage in full quality, which is something I definitely couldn't do after adding color, special effects, transitions, and whatnot. That's something I can do just just fine, perfectly smooth with the eGPU RAM and SSD. It's been a great overall setup for me to have, uh, and it's totally worth it if you want a Mac Mini, but you really want the best performance you can get under that $2,000 mark. Uh, some of these products might have gone off sale, so you might see it a bit over 2,000, but it's all definitely gonna be under that 2,100 mark, which I feel is great for what you're getting. I've edited raw C200 footage, raw red footage on here, and had little to no issues Issues. The export times could be a little bit shorter, but like I said, for under $2,000, I'm definitely not gonna complain. And for my personal everyday workflow, it's been a great, great setup to have. So like I said, all of these products will be linked in the description down below if you wanna check them out, the SSD, the RAM, and of course the eGPU, as well as other products that I've added to my desk setup, uh, like I've recently added this 31.5 inch BenQ 4K Thunderbolt 3 monitor, which has been really great because I can just plug my SSD right into that guy. Um, and as far as peripherals goes, because the Mac Mini doesn't come with any, a keyboard and mouse, I'm still rocking the Logitech Craft and MX Master 2S with hopefully the new versions on the way. 
But yeah, all that stuff will be linked down in the description for you to check out. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to give a thumbs up and stay subscribed because there's definitely more content coming from us very, very soon. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.